Jeg ved godt til at give en ring i sig, når du er nu I din nusu, bing af til rarisu Red godt til en jasarina i At i asu til ti Gisera mig i gaffi til sui Marie, det er tiden i sætte tid I minut, i sig i sin egen ofte tid Hello and welcome to the end of Inglefield Fjord, roughly 800 miles from the North Pole. This year's primary scientific objective is with NASA's Ocean Melting Greenland program, or OMG. OMG is a five-year program that is researching the health of the Greenland ice cap and its surrounding fjords. What we are doing is we are helping them locate a warmer, saltier water column that is coming up from the Atlantic and eating Greenland's glaciers from underneath, helping to speed up the rate of the glacier and therefore the melt. This is very important because if you were to melt all of the glaciers on Earth outside of Greenland and Antarctica, you'd only add about a foot and a half to sea level rise. If you melt the Greenland ice cap, you add 21 feet to sea level rise globally. We are horribly unprepared to deal with sea level rise. So what we do is we go up into these fjords and uh, we map the seafloor looking for deeper areas where this warmer water column might be hiding. We also lower a CTD probe in these areas to verify that this warmer water column exists. This is a 1300 mile survey. We are mapping 1300 miles of the seafloor and we are doing 130 CTD casts, some of which down to 3000 feet. This is a particularly difficult place to do research for a number of reasons. First off, you have a whole lot of ice, but this year in particular, we had a lot of bad weather. We had three storms in the first three weeks, and we're only able to do research for 10 of the first 24 days. The rest of the time, we were hiding on anchor in little nooks and crannies, uh, waiting out these storms. Some of these storms were only supposed to blow 25 and 30 knots, and ended up blowing 50 knots with hurricane force winds, blowing us off our anchor out into the middle of the fjords, where we then had to fight our way back to get into a shallower water to drop the anchor again. One of the difficulties when doing this research is the ice. When going into these fjords, you never know what you're gonna find. Some of the fjords uh, have very minimal ice as you approach the glacier. Some of the fjords have so much ice, you'll never make it to the glacier. While doing this, we always have to have somebody on the front of the boat pushing away the ice while somebody else drives. They're constantly communicating back and forth. We all take turns doing this job. If it wasn't bad enough to have the small pack ice and bergy bits, there's also giant icebergs. Some of these icebergs are melting and are rotten. And you have to be careful not to get too close because some of these bergs might break apart and roll over right on top of your vessel. Inglefield Fjord is one of the last uncharted regions in Northwest Greenland. You have very poor weather forecasts. You have rocks hiding all over the place. You have no idea where they are. You have ice everywhere. Uh, on the maps, there show islands that turn out to be peninsulas. And sometimes you find peninsulas on the map that turn out to be islands. This is uh, about as close to old school exploration as you can find today sailing through uncharted waters, doing important research in places where nobody has ever done research before. There is very, very little information about the seafloor in this area. 
in order for NASA to have a much better idea of the influence of these currents on the shrinking of the active glaciers in northwest Greenland, they need to have a really good idea of the subsurface geometry of this area. And in order to do that, they need a lot of depth soundings. The ALT has a single beam sonar and a DGPS, a differential GPS unit. Combining those two, we're able to get a pretty good idea of how deep this fjord is. A depth without an accurate position is pretty useless. That's why we have the hemisphere DGPS, because it was able to provide us sub-meter accuracy at least half of the time during this survey, uh, considering that there's very limited satellites in this part of the world. We used a, a couple different sonars during this survey. We used the Odom CV200, its single beam high frequency, in order to map out the shallower waters, so about 600 feet and less. Uh, we also use the SIMRAD NSS7, uh, the BMS-1 sonar, it's low frequency, so that we could map out the deeper areas throughout this fjord. Throughout the survey, we used HIPAC software in order to collect the data, review the data, see how we're progressing through the survey, and most importantly, how to strategize to finish up. Aside of mapping the seafloor with a single beam sonar, the most important instrument that we're using during this expedition is a device called a CTD. That stands for Conductivity, Temperature, and Depth. And basically that instrument, when dropped from the sea surface to just above the seafloor bottom, it collects the information of temperature and salinity on its way down and on its way back up. This information will help us verify that there is or is not the Atlantic water currents coming up and melting the glaciers from underneath within this fjord. Now that we have completed our survey for NASA, all we have to do is sail 3,000 miles back to Annapolis, Maryland in the United States. Thanks again for joining the video blog, and you can always make a donation via PayPal on the website. Thank you. Shoot!